So, welcome to my talk on multi-encytic phase transformations of nickel titanium nanocrystals. My name is Thomas Weitz. I'm from the University of Vienna, and I give this talk also on behalf of my colleagues. To start with, what is a multi-encytic phase transformation in a nutshell? Uh, this specific type of transformation is based on collective, and as we hopefully will learn today, reversible atomic displacements. In nickel titanium, the phase transformation from the austenite to the margin side can be induced by cooling or straining. And typically, a large transformation strain can arise in so-called variance or strain domains. The local arrangement of the strain domains of this variance can be rather complex, and this is important, is coupled to the overall macroscopic shape of a sample, giving rise to this unique thermomechanical properties of shape memory and superelasticity. So why study the multi-encytic phase transformation in nanocrystals? First of all, this transformation itself is strongly size dependent. For example, the transformation strain energy can increase with decreasing crystal size tending to stabilize the austenite and, of course, vice versa, to uh, suppress the margin side the other way around. And secondly, in a nanocrystal, everything of the margin side, its nucleation, its growth, its self-accommodated uh, uh, arrangement of variance is confined to this very small volume. And this is making but this is a situation ideal for in situ experiments. Uh, the nickel titanium nanocrystals uh, used in this study are not freestanding, but they are embedded in an amorphous matrix of the same chemical composition. It's also nickel titanium plus the state of nickel titanium. And you can see these nanocrystals or nanospheres embedded here in this um, amorphous phase. And due to their rather small size, nanocrystals, uh, typically less than about 100 nanometer in diameter, the transformation from the cubic B2 austenite to the monoclinic B19 prime margin site is already suppressed. I have to be more specific. The thermally induced transformation is suppressed because the margin site start temperature is below room temperature. Instead, there is the formation of an intermediate phase, the so-called R phase. And uh, here, this is also a Martin City transformation, but with rather small transformation strengths. So the R phase is just a slight rhomboidal distortion of the cubic austenite. To induce the actual B19 prime martin site in these nanospheres, additional cooling has to be supplied below or achieved below room temperature, or a stress has to be applied. And in our experiment, the latter is done with um, using methods of in situ straining uh, uh, formed in situ in the transmission electron microscope. Uh, the in situ straining experiment is applied to tiny dog bone shaped specimens. I don't want to go in any detail here, but the important message is the structural changes you can observe upon loading can be recorded simultaneously uh, with a load displacement curve. And uh, this load displacement curve, if the dimensions of the sample, the gauge length and the cross sectional area, are of your sample are known, uh, then they can be converted to a stress strain curve. So let's have a look into one of these actual experiments. Of course, there are videos taken. This is a dynamic experiment, but due to the limitations of this online format, I can only show it some sort of snapshots. Here, a nanocrystal of about 50 nanometer is already strained to a stress level of about 50 gigapascal. Uh, no phase change has occurred yet, but on further increase 
of the stress, a critical value is reached for the onset of the transmission. Please note that the, uh, not the entire crystal transforms, but there is a first tiny martensitic lamella nucleated. It spans the crystal, but has a very, very uh, um, small thickness of about two to three nanometer only. On further increase of the stress, the lamella grows, it thickens laterally, and additional lamellae are nucleated. Here denoted as two and three. And with increasing stress, of course, they further thicken, and the fourth lamella is formed. And this is uh, uh, this is also the morphology at the maximum stress here reached at a stress level of about one gigapascal. So on unloading or upon unloading, uh, the lamella start to become thinner. Until at some critical stress, uh, they completely vanish. And as you probably have already noted, um, uh, they vanish, no, the vanishing of these lamella occurs in the reverse order of their appearance. And after complete removal of the load, uh, the very same untransformed nanocrystal is observed as, as uh, in the beginning of the stream. Um, here I've plotted, in this slide I have plotted the onset stress and the vanishings for these four lamella. And uh, the onset stress is always larger than the corresponding vanishing stress. And this difference gives a stress hysteresis that's almost the same uh, for all of these four lamella. Now, the transformation is not only completely reversible in a given loading and unloading cycle, but it's also reversible for different cycles. Here I have shown two consecutive loading cycles. The transformation is reversible on a nanoscale, since within the experimental area, about two nanometers, the lamella nucleate at the very same positions in the very same sequence and show a similar thickening uh, for a different stress increment. So there is not only morphological information available by the in-situ experiments, but uh, you can also achieve crystallographic information during the in-situ loading. In this slide, I show you a uh, in-situ electron diffraction pattern, uh, diffraction data of a nanocrystal that was tilted so that one of its low index crystallographic directions is parallel to the electron beam. And then the corresponding diffraction pattern can be analyzed in terms of the uh, corresponding phase structures. At zero stress, the pattern here corresponds to the R phase. And in maximum stress, about two gigapascals here, it shows reflections of the B19 prime margin cycle. Again, the transformation is found to be fully reversible since the diffraction pattern prior and after complete loading and unloading cycle are identical. So one can use the intensity of these reflections, probably one of these rather low intensity reflections that are typical uh, and, and well isolated from others are uh, for these two phases involved, the R phase and the B19 prime. This is the one minus one zero and the one reflection here occurring at one half and one third positions of fundamental reflections. If you have ever carried out such uh, deflection experiments, you're probably familiar with that. And you can, of course, plot the intensity of these reflections as a function of applied of stress. And on loading upon loading at a critical value of about 0.7 gigapascal, then you can clearly see that the reflection, reflected intensity of the surface is dropping and the uh, intensity of the corning. B19 prime reflection is rising till some saturation value is achieved. And of course, these um, uh, intensities 
uh, reflect the uh, phase fraction of these two um, of these two lattice structures. And upon unloading, uh, then of course with decreasing load, decreasing stress, the P19 prime uh, martensite uh, intensity uh, starts to decrease, the phase fraction starts to decrease, and the intensity of the halfways uh, starts to increase again. And the stress at about slightly less than 0.5 gigapascal, uh, the P19 prime phase has completely vanished. No, you can use these well isolated reflections to obtain some structural information, but given a suitable resolution in your electron diffraction pattern, you can also use some of these strong reflections uh, that are common to both phases, uh, but they are occur at slightly different positions in this diffraction pattern due to the different transformation strings. Uh, this is shown here for the marked reflection 1, 1, minus 1, and the reflection 0, 2. Uh, and in the case of the R phase and the B19 prime margin side, the corresponding interplanar spacings uh, differ about 8%. And um, this yields an apparent splitting of the reflection at an intermediate stress. And this shows the presence of both phases. And you also can see the shift of the uh, uh, position of uh, this reflection uh, due to the different lattice strains, due to the different lattice parameters uh, from uh, the R phase to the B19 prime margin side position uh, uh, in, in, in this. Um, in this false color uh, um, coded um, intensity uh, maps. So finally, I will show you some results obtained by combine, combining information uh, obtained by imaging and by uh, using the diffraction mode of the transmission electron microscope. Uh, in this nanogram, interestingly, only a single variant of Martensat is observed. Actually, I have to be a little bit more precise, since the Martin size shows very fine uh, so-called OO1 compound twins. And this type of twinning is a consequence of this crystal size, uh, since in order to reduce the transformation strain energy, um, uh, such a, a twin, fine twin morphology is favored. Still, there are six uh, possible compound twin variants of the B19 prime margin side. And the question arises uh, why there is only one occurring and how out of the six is this specific one selected? And one should note that there is a variant selection rule proposed theoretically based on the best accommodation of the external loading stress by the transformation strings. And in the specific nanocrystal shown here, one can clearly conclude that that variant is selected that shows the largest transformation strain parallel to the loading direction. Uh, and therefore, the transformation observed in this individual nanocrystal perfectly agrees with the theoretical variant selection rule. So this brings me to my conclusions. So use in situ TM because this facilitates the analysis of martensitic phase transformations at a nanoscale and specifically in nanoscale volumes. In the nickel titanium nanocrystals, besides the hysteresis, the transformation is observed to be perfectly reversible. And in the nanocrystals, the martensitic variant occurs that shows the best accommodation of the external stress. So uh, thank you for your attention and um, your attention. And I would be happy to take some questions.